Hello, and welcome yet again to another lovely session of Civil Engineering with Tanya J. Laird. I am the aforementioned Tanya J. Laird. This video is going to be a short exploration of a method of applying fundamental physics and engineering principles in everyday life. I'm currently working on the next video in my wood design series, and this is just a short video sharing something I wanted to explore. The origin for this video is largely seasonal. For several reasons, I tend to focus more on fitness during the summer months. I live generally in tune with the school year schedule. As such, I tend to focus more on fitness during the summer months than, say, in the period immediately after New Year's. Additionally, I've been working this summer to get in a little bit better shape, making up for some of that time spent in quarantine during the spring. Anyway, lately my mind has been on fitness, health, etc. more, and I suppose that was the genesis for this video. Now, I feel I should insert an obvious disclaimer here. Uh, first of all, I am not a doctor, I am an engineer. I am going to discuss a topic that involves health and nutrition, but only in general terms from, for, from a first principles perspective. This video is not meant to provide medical or fitness advice. Obviously discuss with a doctor or nutritionist before taking anything I say uh, really to heart. So this video will focus on the famous BMI or body mass index. If you're not familiar, BMI is meant as a tool to provide a rough indication of a person's general level of fitness. It was created by this lovely gentleman, Belgian astronomer and mathematician Lambert Adolphe Jacques Quidlet, around 1800. I apologize, it is almost inevitable that I messed up this pronunciation. I apologize to any Belgian or French-speaking viewers. It is formed by dividing the mass of an individual by their height squared, and then multiplying by a constant to account for units. If you're using kilograms and meters, you multiply by 703 to produce a value with units of kilograms per square meter. Uh, Quetelet originally intended that this index would be applied to the study of entire populations, but it is often used today as a method of approximating individual fitness levels. Now, the BMI is admittedly an imperfect tool. It ignores a myriad of factors. It doesn't take into account muscle mass percentage, level of exercise, genetics, etc. An actual physician has much better tools to measure fitness and health. Body fat percentage can be directly measured using a variety of techniques. Blood pressure can be measured. Blood work can be used to determine uh, uh, various factors such as cholesterol and a number of other indicators. BMI is an imprecise tool at best. However, BMI does have one saving grace, and that is in its simplicity. It is a tool that can be applied with the most rudimentary of equipment and training. For example, measuring blood pressure requires a specialized tool, a sphygmomanometer, if you're wondering what the name of that arm cuff dial bulb contraption uh, used to measure blood pressure is called, now you know. It also requires a specialized, uh, knowledgeable operator. Not just anyone can use a sphygmomanometer properly. Measuring blood properties such as cholesterol levels requires draw, drawing blood, which is not something I recommend in the home environment, and a literal laboratory full of equipment and machinery. BMI, in contrast, for all its faults, is a very simple tool to apply. It requires knowing only two quantities, a person's height and their weight or mass. No special training is required, and the only equipment necessary is a common bathroom scale and a tape measure, if for some reason someone doesn't already know their height. With all that said, why am I here commenting about it? Well, my gripe with the BMI isn't its rough, approximate nature. Rough tools can be useful. Rules of thumb can be useful. In appropriate contexts, I'm happy to use an imprecise tool, as long as that imprecise tool is quick and easy to apply. No, my problem with the BMI is something much more fundamental. In my mind, the BMI's sin is not that it is imprecise. That I can live with. The BMI does something far, far worse. It commits the most unforgivable of crimes. It ignores fundamental physics. Thus, we come back to one of my favorite bugaboos, the square cubed law. The square cube law shows up a lot in nature and in many topics of biology. It's why I roll my eyes whenever I uh, read things like, an ant can carry 50 times its own body weight. That would be like a human lifting several cars at once. In short, the square cube law is a relationship between dimensions, area, and volume. Consider, for example, a simple cube. Imagine now doubling the dimensions of this cube. The height, length, and width double. 
However, the surface area increases by a factor of 4, and the volume increases by a factor of 8. Area increases with the square of dimensions, while volume increases with the cube of dimensions. This is the most basic expression of the square cube law. This is why there are no insects the size of people. The respiratory systems used by them simply cannot scale up to the size of large animals. Chris Gazat has done a few excellent videos on this topic. See a link below in the description. And this is the problem I have with the BMI. Imagine a human who is 5 foot 2 inches tall. They have a certain body fat percentage, muscle percentage, bone density, etc. You then somehow increase their height to 5 foot 8 inches tall. You in turn increase all of their other dimensions as well. You increase their height by about 10%, but you also increase their other dimensions by 10% but their volume and in turn their weight would not increase by 10%, their weight would increase by approximately 32%. BMI does take some of this into account by dividing by the height squared. However, it doesn't consider the full effect of the cubic relationship between height and weight. Considering only the square of the height does not consider the full cubic relationship between dimension and volume, and thus the full cubic relationship between height and weight. However, there is another tool that does consider this full effect, and that is the Ponderal Index, also alternatively known as the Corpulence Index, which I have to say I really love that name, Corpulence Index. This index divides mass not by height squared, but by height cubed and thus it takes into account the full effect of the square cubed law. It will have the same units, mass divided by length cubed, as density, and thus it should be expected to be a better indicator of individual fitness. In fact, some studies have been done that have explored whether BMI or the Ponderal Index is better at predicting various health outcomes, and many have found that it is superior in many ways. There's a link to a few of these uh, such studies in the description below. Of course, the Ponderal Index does have many of the same limitations as the BMI. Actual medical tests are, of course, better. But rough tools can be useful, and the Ponderal Index is likely a better rough tool than the BMI. For example, say you want to roughly compare the fitness level of two people. Now, ideally, this would be between two people of the same gender. Uh, considering the various effects of muscle mass, body fat percentage, etc. between the sexes, or even better, between two siblings of the same sex. Let's say one person is 5 foot 2 inches tall and weighs 115 pounds. A second person is 5 foot 8 inches tall. How much would the second person have to weigh to have a roughly equivalent level of fitness? Well, applying the square cube law, you multiply by the ratio of heights cubed, Doing so produces a value of 152 pounds. Now, compare this to BMI. A 5 foot 2 inch, 115 pound person has a BMI of 21. The 5 foot 8 inch, 152 pound person has a BMI of 23. 21 versus 23. The BMI would say that the 5 foot 8 inch person should have a weight of 38 pounds to have a roughly equivalent level of fitness. When elementary physics and mathematics, indicates that they should ha actually have a weight of 152 pounds. Thus, this is the fundamental problem with the BMI. It commits the unforgivable sin of ignoring the square cubed law, and that's something I simply cannot condone. Thus, when I want to roughly measure fitness levels, I prefer the Ponderal Index to the Body Mass Index. Again, I just want to reiterate that this video is meant to be taken in very general terms. Health and fitness are incredibly complex topics and something one can literally spend a lifetime studying. This video is only meant as a brief comparison of two rules of thumb and for why I prefer the Ponderal Index to the BMI as a rough tool of measuring personal fitness. I discuss it only as an example of how topics of elementary physics and mathematics can be applied to everyday life. I certainly encourage you to read more if this is a topic that you are interested in. Regardless, I hope you found this video enlightening, or at least not too annoying. Feel free to discuss in the comments below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to make the robots happy. Uh, if you would like to support this channel, see the link to our Patreon in the video's description. Regardless, thank you for watching, and the next video in the wood design series will be out soon. I hope you all have a fine day, and as always, thank you.